Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining in again. Uh, in the last video, we discussed and we went through some of the ATP safe attachment, safe flings, and anti phishing policies, and we looked at various recommended configuration that you should make to begin with. Today, we're going to talk about how ATP anti phishing policy, especially the anti anti user impersonation, actually going to work. So, what we configured the other day was that we specified one username or display name in our anti impersonation policy so that if any email coming in the name of Emily Brown from a different domain than what is specified as per my organization, that email should actually go ahead and get quarantined because any motivated attacker can use Emily's name to interact with her subordinates and then initiate a high value transaction or maybe try to fraud them. Now Emily in this case is a finance head and she interacts with a lot of her subordinates for some high value transactions and that needs to be sanitized. Now let's go ahead and see what uh, how this is actually going to work. So what we have done here, so we have added uh, Emily's name as a protected display name and this policy is applicable to all the users in my organization and the action here is to basically quarantine the message and we have also configured the mailbox intelligence so that the ATP policies or ATP will constantly monitoring the mailbox to see who these users interact with on a regular basis and if the mailbox has similar is has similar email coming in with the same display name that a user has been interacting with earlier but this time around the disp the domain name is different than what the user has been interacting with then it can call it out as a and it, it can call it out as an impersonation attempt and can take you know actions based on whatever we have specified over here all right so let's go ahead and, uh, and come out of this policy now what what i'm going to do here i'll just go ahead and show you close this now what i'm going to go ahead and do here is let's let me take you to the mailbox of one of my user called xander and you can see here that xander has already received an email from emily brown and she has uh, communicated to xander that a po is approved now this is a legitimate email because it has come from emily uh, it's you know, herself, uh, she is uh, part of the organization, so it has actually come from the Emily's uh, own email address, and which is perfectly fine. Now, I'm gonna, si I'm gonna simulate an impersonation attempt, an email coming in the name of Emily, going to Xander, but this time around, the email is gonna come from a different source altogether. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm, I have created a separate mailbox altogether for Emily on Yahoo Mail. And the email has the exact, this account has the exact same display name as Emily Brown in the corporate office ATP tenant. And this time around, I'm gonna send an email to Xander uh, with the notification that he uh, is he ready to initiate the transfer of fund. And once Xander starts interacting with this user, uh, this fraud user or fraud attacker here, uh, then the attacker probably send out a different uh, bank information for Xander to go ahead and initiate the transfer. And I'm going to go ahead and send this particular email to Xander and let's see what happens. Now I just sent an email to Xander. Now if I come back to Xander's mailbox, of course I'll wait for, so this is the previous email that Emily wrote to him which is fine uh, but I I have still not found, I've still not seen any e new email coming from Emily uh, from his Yahoo mail. I've checked, I let me check my junk mailbox folder as well. If any email has gone there, no, no such email here. All right, so I have not got any email so far from the, f the fraud Emily Brown. Now, it looks like that the anti impersonation policy has actually blocked that email. So, how can I? verify that i'm going to go ahead to my security and compliance dashboard i'm going to go to threat management review and i'm going to see the quarantine mailbox so let's see the, our our quarantine section and see if there are any emails available all right so there is one email that actually has been picked up the email coming from 
yahoo.com and the same email which is quarantine reason is phishing so this is how the email looked like it has the subject line uh, the quarantine reason is phishing so this is how you can and from here you can actually get to see the message header from where the email actually has come from and various other things in this uh, of course spf pass which is coming from a reputed domain however the, the name display name actually matches with the protected user in our anti phishing policy and you can actually see, also get to see a preview of the message so that you can take a uh, you know, proper judgment call as an administrator should it really go to the user or it was a legitimate attempt of impersonation and and here you can actually move download the message or if you think that this message uh, is false positive you also have an option to release it but in this case it was actually a, a real impersonation attempt of Emily Brown uh, to her subordinate so this is how the anti impersonation policy is going to work and the user impersonation going to policy is going to work so same display name uh, however with a different domain altogether coming from uh, outside and trying to persuade users to do additional task or high value activities uh, is going to get blocked by the anti user impersonation policy of ATP in Office 365. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you like these videos. And next time, we're going to talk about some additional information security capabilities in Microsoft Stack. Thank you so much. Thank you.